Gary at Fair Oaks. tyrants were largely responsible for the gradual but ever certain disintegration, uh, the collapse of the Roman Empire. <clears throat> now tomorrow, boys, I want to take up the fall of Antioch and the Persians and the fall of the Emperor Valerian. That will be the assignment for tomorrow. Make notes of that, if you please, and be prepared for recitation tomorrow afternoon. All right. Now, during the last few moments of this period, I want you to listen to the recitation of a special assignment <coughs> which I've asked Cadets Dugan and Dow Campbell to prepare. Cadet Dugan, are you ready? Yes, sir. Very well. You may begin. Well, this recitation is the story of Damon and Pentheus. Uh, Pentheus was really the man's name. Bruce and I found out it wasn't Pythias at all. Well... Damon and Phintias were followers of Pythagoras, an ancient Greek philosopher. And because of his beliefs, Phintias was condemned to death by the emperor Dionysius. Well, Phintias expressed, asked the emperor if he could be let off for a little while so he could go home and arrange his affairs. At first, the emperor didn't want to do that, but finally, well, Damon made a pledge to the emperor that if Phintias didn't come back when he promised, he, Damon, would forfeit his life for his friend. So the emperor finally agreed, and so Phintheus finally left the prison and left his friend Damon there in his place. <laughs> then Damon didn't know whether Phintheus would get back when he said he would or not. But, well, Damon didn't care because Phintheus was the best friend he had, and Damon was willing to give up his life for his friend. And then, uh, just as Damon <coughs> thought the emperor would send for him to slay him, Pentheus showed up, and Damon was saved. But the emperor was so affected by the friendship between the two men that he let them both go free and then asked them if he, himself, couldn't join their friendship. Well, I guess that's all of the story. Thank you, Duke. Uh, Cadet Doc Campbell. Yes, sir? Have you anything to add to the story Dugan has just told us? Oh, uh, no, sir. I think Mr. Dugan has told the story very well. Uh, yes, I see. Of course. Uh, well, Cadet Dow Campbell, do you gain any basic lesson from this story of Damon and Phintius? Story, sir? Uh, well, I don't think I know exactly what you mean. Well, I mean, does the story of Damon and Phintius convey any meaning to you, other than being just a good story of ancient Grecian times? Well, uh, sir, well, of course it does illustrate the great power of a true friendship. Oh, yes. Yes, that's true, of course. Very well. Thank you, Cadet Dow Campbell. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Pipe down, lady. Mm -hmm. huh? Well, for the love Yes, friendship. It is a powerful force in civilization. Throughout the ages, young gentlemen, nothing has ever been permanently accomplished through bloodshed and war. Every phase of the progress of humanity has been attained through brotherly love, amity, and friendship. I think it was Robert Blair a poet of the early 18th century who expressed it thus. Friendship, mysterious cement of the soul, sweetener of life, and soldier of society. 
Well, uh, come prepared to recite tomorrow upon the fall of Antioch and the capture of Valerian. As a matter of fact, oh, very well. Class dismissed. <laughs> That was a very good recitation you gave, Mr. Dugan. Thanks. Hey, do you think Professor Custis was going to tell us we could expect a test tomorrow? Huh? Oh, I don't know, Lee. I haven't got the slightest idea. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you going now? Oh, I thought I might wander over to the gym and get in a little basketball practice. I heard some of the other fellows say they were going over. That's well, I'll go with you. I feel like having a little exercise myself. Okay. Come on, let's get going. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's Bruce Dow Campbell just going out the door, too. Oh, yeah, I see him. Uh, Jerry. Yeah? What? Oh, wait a minute. I'll tell you when we get outside of Custis Hall. Say, look. What? Bruce is waiting for somebody. <laughs> I'll bet he's Red Morrison. Yeah, maybe. Hello, Bruce. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Dugan. Mr. Phillips? Hiya, Bruce. <laughs> Uh, what were you going to say to me a couple of minutes ago, Lee? Uh, well, let's sit over there a minute on that alumni bench, huh? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you... Well, maybe you don't want to talk about it, Jerry. Oh, sure, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask you how you got along with Bruce Dow Campbell when you worked together last night on that problem Professor Custis gave you. Well... I can't figure it out. I mean, why Professor Custis had us work on that assignment together. It certainly didn't have anything to do with the lesson today. Why, gee, the story of Damon and Phineas happened in the 4th century B.C. And we're studying about the Roman Empire in the 2nd century A.D. Yeah, I know. Well, haven't you got any idea at all why Custis had you and Bruce work together on that assignment? Well... Yeah, maybe I have. Don't you think that maybe it's because he found out about that little scrap you and Bruce almost had in Max, and, well, he wanted to do whatever he could to make you and Bruce become friends? Mm-hmm. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Old Stormy Weather's like that, Jerry. It always hurts him when two cadets have a misunderstanding about anything, and I've heard that he does his level best to straighten it out between them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, well, you, you did get along all right with Bruce in the study hall library last night, didn't you? Oh, Sure. We got a couple of books and started looking up the story. Bruce finally found it in Professor Custis's own book. Then we both read it together a couple of times. Well, that was all there was to it. Bruce went over to Trent Hall and I came back to the room. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Hey, hey, you got something you want to talk about. What is it? Well, yes, I, I do have something I'd like to say to you. Okay, shoot. You, you won't get sore, will you? Sore? I'll go on. Why should I get sore? Go ahead, say whatever you've got to say and get it off your chest. Well, I've been wanting to say this for a long time, Jerry, but, well, I've never been able to get up enough nerve, I guess. Nerve? Say, what's this all about? Have I got myself in bad worse than ever? Oh, no, no, that isn't it. Well, go on, what have you got to say? Well, Jerry, I've noticed a lot of times that you say things in a way that, well, I, I think they sound to other people a whole lot different than you really mean them to sound. Well, what are you talking about? I mean just exactly what I'm saying. I think a lot of times you make remarks, just in kidding, of course, that sound like you really mean them to other people. Gee, I don't know what you're talking about, Lee. Well, like the other night. You looked at that black tie I wear with my dress uniform. Yeah. You made some crack about the ends being so frayed out I could braid them pretty soon. Oh, yeah, I remember. Jerry, my mother gave me that necktie long before I ever came to Fair Oaks and just a few months before she died. Oh, gee. Golly. And, well, you told me what you said to Bruce Dow Campbell about if he didn't appreciate somebody trying to be his friend, he was just a sap. Yeah. Well, I mean... Well, Jerry, sometimes you just mean those things as being sort of funny, but sometimes, maybe oftener than you think, it means something a lot more to the person you say them to. Well, like Bruce, when you said that to him. He took it as an insult. You didn't mean it that way at all. It was just your way of telling him you wanted to be his friend in spite of the fact that he's rooming with Red Morrison. But, well, you, you said it in a way that Bruce didn't get what you meant, and he got mad about it. Then that Irish blood of yours flared up, and if Mac hadn't have stopped it, you and Bruce would have had a fight right then and there. Yeah, I... I get it. I... 
I just talk too much for my own good. Oh, no, no. Well, that isn't it at all, Jerry. I just mean that, that you have, well, kind of a sharp tongue, you know? And if you just think every now and then that what you're thinking about saying might offend the other person, well, you might not say it. Maybe you might avoid a lot of trouble. Uh-huh. I guess you're right. You... You're not sore because I told you what, what I think, are you? Huh? Oh, oh, no, Lee. For gosh sakes, of course not. It... Well, it just makes me kind of mad that I've got myself into so much trouble by talking out of turn, that's all. I guess, well, well, I'm not trying to alibi, but I think maybe being with the folks in the circus so long and they're all grown up and me just being a kid... <laughs> I know. You mean you sort of had to stand up for your own rights now and then and you've just gotten into the habit, is that it? Yeah, something like that. Well, don't worry about it. Gee, I didn't mean to make so much of an issue out of it, but... Well, I just thought perhaps you might get along with all the rest of the cadets here. If you sort of watch that sharp tongue of yours now and then. Yeah, thanks, Lee. You bet I'll watch it from now on. Okay, here's your chance right now. Huh? Well, what do you mean? <laughs> here comes Bruce. Oh. How do you do, gentlemen? Hello, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Oh, uh, are you chaps planning to do anything right now? Uh, planning to do anything? Well, I mean, uh... I thought you might like to join me and go over to Mr. McLeod's for a bit of ice cream or something. Oh, well, Bruce Lee and I were just going over to the gym and get in a little basketball practice. Don't you want to come along? Basketball? Oh, no, really. Thank you just the same. Well, gee, why not? Oh, I'm afraid I'd be quite out of place in that sport. I don't know a thing about it. Well, golly, you can learn. Sure, come on, Bruce. Oh, oh I, I don't think I'd be really quite comfortable trying it quite so soon. I think I'd rather watch it two or three times first. Well, swell then. Come on over to the gym with Lee and me and watch the rest of the fellas practice. Sure, Bruce. And, and then after watching practice a few times, you'll get the hang of the game, and then you can come out for a practice game or two yourself. Well, right then. Well, I'd be glad to walk over and just be a sort of spectator this afternoon. Swell. Come on. Uh, uh, Jerry. Yeah? May I compliment you on the recitation you made this afternoon? Well, Professor Custis on the story of Damon and Pentheus. Okay, Bruce, and thanks. You, uh, you, you don't mind if I make one little correction, do you? Huh? Oh, 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 of uh, course not. Go right ahead. Well, I think you neglected to mention that it was quite a bad storm which kept Pentheus from returning at the time he planned. Oh, yeah, I guess I did forget that. Say, thanks for not reminding Professor Custis that I forgot it. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that important. No. No, I guess it wasn't. Had a boy, Jerry. Huh? What do you mean by that, Mr. <laughs> Nothing much. I just mean, well, that's watching the old tongue, Dugan. <laughs>